And welcome back to the weekly UAS news update. Yes, I am back in town. I want to thank Haya for covering for me for the last two weeks when uh, I was out on uh, travel in France. So I did find my RTH. I thought that was a really funny intro. And uh, this week we've got four st five stories, actually, five big stories. The first one is Amazon is planning to start deliveries in California, and that's uh, going to be interesting. Uh, there was a drone that was found crashed near a runway, and we want to give you a bit more information because I think there are some confused people out there. Uh, we'll talk about the Drone Act of 2022, the Crime Prevention Act. And uh, well, the government is trying to, I think, pay attention to what happened in the Ukraine. And we'll talk about Drone Safety Awareness Day, which is coming up tomorrow if you're watching this live as, it's, uh, as it is published. And then lastly, the big story is that we have a new course that is going to be released and uh, we're really excited about it. So let's get to it. And the first story this week is Amazon is going to start doing drone deliveries in Northern California later this year. Uh, they announced that Prime Air uh, is going to be uh, carrying packages that weigh up to five pounds and are about the size of a shoebox or smaller. They said that they will hover 10 feet over the ground to drop the package and then they'll be able to find the spot via a QR code that the uh, customer is going to be printing on a piece of paper. Uh, I find this interesting. I think it's an ad the additional step that uh, eventually I think they need to get rid of uh, so that it's a little bit easier for people to get their packages. But I guess that's the only way right now where they can find uh, the landing spot. So uh, we'll put a link down in the description where you can find more information about this. And the next story this week is a drone that was found crashed near a runway. Uh, this happened in Arkansas at the Boone County Regional Airport. Uh, the Boone County Regional Airport is a Lancer proof airport. Uh, the drone was a skyride which is a pretty small model that's about $50. Uh, the aircraft was not registered, doesn't need to be because it's pretty small. Now, I found this story interesting because the airport manager was quoted as saying, our airport is a class E is in class E airspace, which it's true, it's a class E at the surface, so it needs lens approval. Uh, a drone is not allowed to go zero feet, is not allowed to go zero feet, I think there's a misquote somewhere, uh, within four miles of an airport, of our airport and can then go up to 400 feet after that, said the uh, Boone County Regional Airport Manager. Now, I think she's confused because we looked at the chart. When I read this quote, I was like, that doesn't sound right. Uh, they said that the uh, the restriction covers the entire city limits. And then there is uh, an exception uh, to the far southeast side of the airport. And she said there's no drones that are uh, allowed to do this unless you are a Part 107 operator and you get permission from the FAA to fly. So. A lot of confusion here. I do want to clear this up. Drones are allowed to fly near airports if they have approval from the FAA. No, it is not only limited to Part 107 operator. Re recreational pilots can get approval to fly in controlled airspace, even uh, as they get closer, not in zero grid. Yes, that is correct. But you can fly near the airport. Uh, you can see from the picture here that that airport is actually not completely zero grid everywhere over the city. It slopes up as it does for other airports, so 100, 200, and 400 feet on the outside. So uh, we're going to reach out to the airport manager let them know that uh, that's not entirely true, just so they have the information. Uh, but we, th we thought that was actually interesting. And the next story this week is the Drone Act of 2022 Crime Prevention. Now, this is a bill that's in the uh, US House of Representatives at the moment, and they seek to cover what they call malicious use of drones. Uh, that includes weaponizing a drone, uh, impairment of identification or the lighting on the drone, uh, interfering with protected activities such as uh, operation of aircraft, flying over airports, flying near uh, vessels, vehicles, law enforcement, military operation. Uh, they're also trying to prevent operating in restricted areas with the knowledge of the prohibition. This would also cover transportation of contraband, threat attempts or conspiracies of the above, uh, terrorism or and electronic surveillance, and then penalties for injuries or death based on uh, the above of infraction. So the law would allow the Department of Homeland Security to basically prosecute certain offenses that are uh, in the FAA books at the moment. So they're trying to replicate some of this regulation that we see with the FAA and trying to make it something that they can prosecute on their side. Um, it's, um, it's interesting because I've been having this discussion several times now. A lot of people are sending me articles about things that are happening in the Ukraine. And I think the government got their eyes wide open as to what is happening in Ukraine with the use of civilian drones to do things that, well, maybe they didn't think about in the past. And I think it's going to do a big disservice, quite frankly, to the rest of the community because uh, we're going to see additional restrictions such as the ones 
that are being shown right here um, for the use of drones. Uh, hopefully this does not restrict you from flying, but this is additional prose prosecution for people that are looking to do uh, bad things with drones. Now, it, it, all in all, this is not really a bad thing, right? Uh, trying to prosecute people that are using drones in a bad way is something that we should all be against, or for, I guess, in this industry, uh, because we want to make sure that the, the industry and the hobby are, are continue to be uh, protected in the future and that uh, any bad bad activity doesn't look bad on the rest of the industry. Uh, this will be interesting. We'll see if it passes or where it goes from here and we'll keep you posted. But I thought uh, this would be something that you would want to know about. And the next story this week is the Drone Safety Awareness Day, or as it's called today, is Drone Safety Day. The FA kind of uh, uh, simplified it. Uh, it used to be a whole week long. Now it's only one day, which is this Saturday. So if you're watching this live uh, today on Friday, 6, 17, June 17, Drone Safety Day is tomorrow. Uh, look for content online from your favorite providers. We'll be posting a video uh, about uh, Drone Safety Day and the things that you should be doing. Now, uh, I'm not gonna lie, Drone Safety Day for us is every single day. This is something that we do all the time. So this doesn't really change anything for us. The, the message for us is still the same. Uh, the FAA came up with this uh, nice uh, and easy thing to remember, which is flight right. And right stands for the R. The first R is register your drone uh, at the drone zone, the only place to do it. Uh, I for interact with others. G for gain knowledge. The H is for have a safety plan. And the last one is trust and train. So do the trust certificate online, uh, which you can do for free with Pilot Institute, so we'll put a link down in the description. Now on Friday, which is the day that this video is going live, at 1 p.m. Eastern, I will be talking with the FAA on their Instagram page uh, live. So make sure that you follow the FAA. It's at FAA on Instagram. You'll see them go live at 1 p.m. We'll be with Karen Morris and a few other people uh, from the industry, and we'll be talking about, well, drone flying and how to fly safe. Again, the message that we uh, spread pretty much every single day. Uh, if you want more information about Drone Safety Day, we'll put down uh, a link down in the description and then you'll be able to see all the other events that are going on. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a, a big drone party if you want. Think about it as Drone Day. You know, we have all these different days uh, throughout the year. So this would be Drone Day. Uh, fly safe, fly right, right? This is kind of the message from the FA. All right, and the last piece of information this week is our photography and videography course is now live on the Pilot Institute website. I'm really excited because we've been working on this course for a long time, uh, and we've actually gathered a team of really cool people uh, to teach you all about uh, photography and videography. And the cool thing is we're actually adding even more content as we go. So we have even more content that's gonna go in the course, but it's ready to go live. So you can actually enroll in the course. We're gonna put a link down in the description. Uh, I'll be teaching some of this stuff. Billy Cal will be teaching. Ken Dono is going to be Ken Dobo. Dono is going to be teaching from uh, Original Dobo. Uh, they're going to be sharing a lot of information that they've learned doing this every single day on the field. And we have two more guest instructors that are going to be joining us with more knowledge. And uh, and again, like I said, I'm really excited. There's nothing like this course available online. We're going to go in depth talking about the basics of photography and videography, giving you all the knowledge that you need to have. And we'll also have exercises is for you to practice and to basically learn from people that are doing this every single day. So like I said, look for the link in the description. And um, yeah, just another course added to our catalog, which is uh, really, really awesome. And that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Like, subscribe. Uh, thank you for the, the warm comments you had for Haya last week. Uh, it's not very easy to step in uh, into something that we've been doing for so long. And I think he did a great job. And uh, that's all. We'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.